All right, so let's go ahead and start understanding the, the extensor mechanism because it's actually pretty tough. The extensor digitorum communist tendon, it comes down here on the dorsal aspect of the finger and it crosses over the MP joint, which is the metacarpal phalangeal joint. And right before it gets to the PIP joint, it actually splits into three pieces. It trifurcates. So there's gonna be a lateral slip, a central slip, and then another lateral slip. So this trifurcation is actually important because it means something. What's gonna to happen to the central slip as you can see, I've outlined it here in black. It's going to continue and insert on the base of the middle phalanx. So again, trifurcation, the central part is called the central slip of the EDC tendon. And it's going to continue to insert on the base of the middle phalanx. And this is important for actually initiating a lot of finger extension. Now what's going to happen to the other parts of the trifurcation, the two lateral slips? So the two lateral slips are going to continue laterally. That's why they're called that and they actually join up with the lateral bands on each side of the finger. Now, what are these lateral bands? Well, as you can see here from the dorsal and volar interossei and also the lumbricals from these intrinsic hand muscles, we're gonna have these intrinsic tendinous contributions which form lateral bands. The lateral bands are gonna continue here and actually join up with the lateral slips. So lateral slip plus lateral band equals conjoined lateral bands. What do the conjoined lateral bands do? They continue traveling laterally and they eventually come on the dorsal aspect of the finger and they come together to form the terminal extensor tendon. Why is this important? Well, because the terminal extensor tendon, which is at the base of the distal phalanx, is important in the extension of the DIP or distal interphalangeal joint. What are some other important parts that you need to understand? What are these sagittal bands? Well, these sagittal bands, they come from the volar plate or sometimes called palmar plate of the metacarpal phalangeal joint. These actually are very important in maintaining the position of the central slip. So they kind of go across like this and they help maintain the central slip in position. And they extend all the way from the MP joint all the way up to where the actual central slip is inserting on the middle phalanx. What about this transverse retinacular ligament? Well, these actually are very, very important in stabilizing this conjoined lateral bands that we talked about. And they actually stabilize them by attaching the lateral band to the flexor tendon sheath. Why do we have these? Well, it's to prevent the dorsal subluxation of the conjoined lateral bands when you're extending your fingers. If the transverse retinacular ligaments are injured, you might actually get a swan neck deformity because the lateral bands are going to sublate, subluxate dorsally and make the DIP and PIP joints come together in conformation that looks actually like a swan neck, which means that the DIP joint will be in flexion and the PIP joint will be in mild extension. Similarly, the transverse retinacular ligaments, how they stabilize the conjoined lateral bands, the triangular ligament also stabilizes the conjoined lateral bands, but it, it does it in a different way. We said the transverse retinacular ligament stabilizes the conjoined lateral bands during extension. Well, the triangular ligament, you can see here, it's kind of shaped like a triangle. It's in between the two conjoined lateral bands that are coming together to form the terminal extensor tendon. This triangular ligament is actually to prevent palmar, not dorsal subluxation during PIP joint flexion. An incompetent triangular ligament means that you get boutonniere deformity, which is flexion of the PIP joint and extension of the DIP joint. This is because the bands, the conjoined lateral bands, will be maintaining the DIP joint and extension and subluxating palmarly and unable to keep the PIP joint in extension. The last important thing we need to talk about is the oblique retinacular ligament. It was discovered by Landsmere, sometimes called Landsmere's ligament. Some people say it does nothing, some people are all about it. Now it originates from the volar aspects of the PIP joint, which, which is a common trend. It seems like the transverse retinacular ligaments and the sagittal bands, they all originate from volar plates respective to where they are. The oblique retinacular, or sometimes called Landsmere ligament, comes from the volar plate of the PIP joint and it goes all the way to insert on the terminal extensor tendon and it helps to stabilize 
this tendon so that the DIP joint and the PIP joint act in concert together.